Chris, did you murder these three people? No, sir. I did not. Did you have someone else kill them? No. Are you behind the charges? No. I think the evidence and the expert testimony has shown that. Well, the prosecutors are suggesting that you are. You understand that? Yes, sir. I've been in jail for 768 days and five and a half hours. And it went like that uh, throughout the direct examination. Let's bring in our guest joining us tonight in Elizabethtown, Kentucky, Court TV legal correspondent Julia Janae. Also with us, I'm so glad he's here tonight in Chicago, Illinois, uh, criminal defense attorney Steve Greenberg as we take a look at a criminal defendant accused of triple murder taking the stand in his own defense. Julia Janae, give me the, the big picture. Like, I watched him and he kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And, and, and I'm not saying that... Um, what that means. It's just I wasn't comfortable watching this guy. I felt like he's a little bit of, um, uh, you know, adding a lot of extra details, talking about himself a lot. Struck me as a guy that if I just was watching him and met him, I wouldn't really trust him. And I'm being honest. That's just my opinion. Now, wh whether or not the prosecution's proved the case, another issue. But how about there inside the courtroom? Was there any reaction from jurors as this man who they've been watching all this evidence, uh, uh, well, some against him, some against his ex-wife, right? Uh, any reaction from this jury today in the way um, he was received inside that courtroom? Vinny, I've talked to a lot of anchors today, and you're the first one to say that this testimony rubbed you the wrong way, but I think that just shows how different people can take the same testimony, and that's what I saw with this jury. There were some people who looked like it was really resonating with them. Everything that he was saying, the moments that he got emotional, talking about his fiance Laura Spencer and his children. You saw some tilted heads showing that possibly they empathized with his situation. But you also saw some people who looked skeptical of what he was saying and how far he went with the information. He was very chatty on direct examination. But one thing is clear, he was able to get out the entirety of his story. I don't think there was anything that was left on the table when it comes to his testimony today. I saw a lot more writing from the jurors than I have any other day of trial. There was one moment where they all had their heads down and there are some who never write, but they were writing today and they were making that good eye contact with this defendant. So it's hard to tell which ones it was positive for, which ones it was negative for, but one thing for sure, they were paying attention during direct examination. I'm the only one? I'm the only one. The only anchor? The only anchor so today. So far, yes. Who, who, who was a little bit uncomfortable watching this guy. Like, he was trying to sell me something that I didn't necessarily want to buy. That's, You're often out on an right, island by is, yourself, Vinny. That's interesting. All right, Steve Greenberg, let me ask you something. Because it's a case, we've been talking about it uh, since it started. A little thin on the evidence, right? Um, a case where a lot of people say prosecutors haven't even proven the case, yet this defendant takes the stand. I want your reaction to that decision. You know, ordinarily you don't like your defendant to take the stand because if the jurors don't like him, if they don't believe uh, the story he's telling, which you hope is, is the true story, uh, then you're going to have problems. Here, you wanted to see, you want the jurors to see who he is, to get the feeling that he's not a killer, uh, to get the feeling that he's a regular guy, because you're trying to say that the killer here is his ex-wife. Right. So you want the jurors to focus on someone else. So in this situation, I understand why they did it. I don't necessarily like the way the examination went. You know, they're charging you with murder here. Like, come on, why are you insulting everyone's intelligence? We've been here for days. Everyone knows that. And then his answer. Yeah, I've been in jail for, you know, 700 days, six hours, 14 minutes and 27 seconds. Those are the kind of things that could rub people the wrong way, rubbed you the wrong way. But uh, I don't know that it was too much of a risk. The prosecutors haven't really thrown much up there. And what I found is jurors will look at it and they'll say, has the prosecution proved their case or do we think they did before they start to analyze the defendant's testimony? All right. Big issue. Uh, the dog tags, right? The, there's his dog tags at the scene of the crime. I think that's a bizarre fact. I don't understand that as part of the confusion here. Uh, but let's listen to uh, Kit Martin talk about it. 
looking at the item in front of you, how many uh, tags are there? Uh, there's just the one. And does it have the rubber boot that you would have had on it if it was uh, yours? No, sir. No. And is it on a breakaway chain? No, it's this white string. Uh, what's, yeah. Did no. you? Nobody would do that. No, no soldier would do that, especially a white string, but they wouldn't put it on a string at all. Well, the prosecutors are suggesting that you, you took that across the street over to the Phillips house. Is yeah. that true? No, it's crazy. I've been to the Phillips house, uh, especially when we first met, but uh, that was a long time ago. Well, they're suggesting that you left those at the Phillips house, that you left a copy of your dog tags after you committed a murder. Yeah, that's real logical. No, uh, I, I heard that, yeah. That's, like is the, and I'm asking, let me be clear of my question. Yeah. Is that true? No, sir, that's no, not true at all. Did anything like that happen? No. Uh, again there, Julia, you know, the dog, I think it's a weird fact in, the, in this whole case, but the way he's answering to me, and, and, and it may very well be because he's a wrongfully accused man who's been in prison for 768 days, and that's what it does to you. I don't know. But for me, I'm just watching him up there like this sarcasm and the little comments and everything, and I'm, I'm shocked that that's the way he's testifying. But it seemed like that was pretty consistent, his demeanor throughout. I've said it before. I think he was just being himself. This is the same demeanor that we saw in interviews that he did back in 2019 and before. So likely this still comes off as genuine for some of these jurors because this is how he approaches things. And he was consistent on direct and cross-examination. You didn't see a change in demeanor just because he didn't particularly like who was asking the questions. It was clear he did not care for the way that the assistant attorney general was questioning him, but the way that he responded was essentially the same. Yeah, and I can understand if someone's been wrongfully accused of triple murder or life's been turned upside down. I mean, I, I can understand there, there might be some anger. Maybe that's what I'm feeling through it. Uh, but I wasn't feeling a connection with him. Which, And I've seen other criminal defendants that I, 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 I'm not going to say a connection, but I, I, felt, I felt a little bit of uh, empathy towards them. I felt a little bit of sympathy. I, I was, you know, what's going on in their lives, someone who's been wrongfully accused here. Uh, at least that's what he's alleging. Um, the dog tags, though, Steve Greenberg, the dog tags. To me, it's such a weird fact. I mean, I don't think a, a killer would leave their dog tags behind, yet they were somehow left at, at, at the house or were found at the house. What, was, what does it mean? You, you know, I've been dealing with drug cases for years where the cops go in with the search warrant and they claim they found the drugs in a shoebox, and lo and behold, that's where the guy's wallet is, and I've never bought it. Uh, and I don't buy the dog tags. First of all, I agree with them. Who would put their dog tags on a string? I mean, even your G.I. Joe, when you were growing up, the dog tags were on a little metal chain. No one would put their dog tags on a string. No one's going to leave their dog tags there. They don't look like they were torn off or they fell off anything. You're going to just leave them there as your calling card. You might as well just make a video and post it on Instagram in, in that situation. I think the dog tags are one of the best facts that exists that someone tried to frame him. You can't leave his fingerprints. You can't leave his DNA. So you leave his dog tags. But again, I don't like the way the questions were being asked. The questions I would have asked are, did you leave your dog tags there? No. Do you keep your dog tags, you know, on a white string? No. More direct like that so that he could be more forceful and, and direct with the jury. Not, well, the prosecution's got this crazy out of the box theory that, you know, you did this. So I, 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 I think some, I think to some extent his answers were invited by the way the questions were asked. And, and that may be what I'm reacting to tonight. All right, let's take a listen. Now this, to me, this is the, the, the key of the whole defense case, right? Uh, here's Kit Martin talking about Joan, the ex-wife. Here we go. Went upstairs finally, finally got past her, went upstairs and she followed me up there. And I didn't know if Mackenzie had come up too. And then she started yelling at me some more. And I was like, finally I got to the point, I was like, look, I'm, I'm, you know, I talked to you about this before, I'm done. Like, I want a divorce. And, and how did she react to that? She acted violently. Uh, and she told me straight up, she's like, first thing came out of her mouth, she's like, if you divorce me, I'll ruin your life. I'll ruin your career. I know how to do it. 
And then she started listening out to us. She's going to say, I'll say you're abusive. And, so, and then I like, cut her off. And I was like, look, I don't know what you're trying to do, but if you think you're being abused, you should call the police. And then uh, I was like, you know what? I'll go call the police. And I went downstairs because the best phone in her reception for some reason was in the dining room. I, don't know, so I went downstairs to the dining room. And I actually called the police. I said, hey, look, nothing's happened. I got this woman, she's threatening me. I, I just wanted to get a divorce. And she's making all these threats and stuff. Could you send somebody out here so that it can be documented that nothing happened? All right. So, Julie Janae, paint the picture for us because every time he was talking about Joan, I mean, he made her out to be the most evil person that has ever walked the face of the earth. I mean, torturing animals. Everything that she did was just awful. He married her. I mean, <laughs> so, so explain to me um, um, what exactly um, the impression that he gave to the jury of, of this woman that at one point uh, he, 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 he took the vows and said, I'll love you, you know, until death do us part. Well, you say he married her, but he downplayed that fact in court. He actually said that he thought there was something wrong with their relationship, didn't want to move it forward, but that she was really pushing for them to get married and he was about to be deployed. So he needed to go ahead and make things official so she would be able to get certain benefits or live in the house that he needed her to live in. So even with that marriage, he stepped back from any responsibility for getting with her and then talked about at length the problems that happened with that relationship, the lies that she was telling, uh, even highlighting uh, some of the things that she said about her exes that were similar to the lies that he said he, uh, she told about him. Uh, and how about the animals? What, did he claim that she did anything to animals? There was an insinuation. He told this really long, thought-provoking story about uh, his dog, where the dog was returned to him when the dog had been in the care of Joan Harmon, and it had this horrible broken leg, and he took it to the vet, and the vet really couldn't ever get the dog back to normal. I mean, it was a really a tearjerker if we were not in a murder trial type story that wasn't even quite responsive to the question that the attorney asked him, but ultimately it pointed back to Joan Harmon harming his animals. All right, and that's all from him. Did the vet testify about it? No, the vet did not testify. Okay, all right. Steve uh, Greenberg, he's minimizing his marriage. I mean, come on. That, I think that's another part of the reason that it rubbed me the wrong way. I, you married the woman. At some point, you loved her, for, 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 for better or for worse, to death do your part. And he's even minimizing that. That's why I don't, I'm not buying everything he's selling. Have you ever been divorced? No. Well, then you, then you don't understand it. But if you'd been in that situation, you would probably resonate more. But with you, would, you would because, minimize the, the marriage everybody... itself? Like, I really didn't everybody, get married, but I got married? Who, well, everybody who's, who ends up divorced at some point changes their opinion of their spouse, or almost everybody, right? It, when they get married, they have one opinion, and eventually that opinion changes, and it ends in a divorce, whether it's mutual, whether it's one way, or whatever. Here, he's saying that this lady went so far as to kill people to get back at him. What I found very interesting was that he did call the police. And, and there is evidence that he called the police, which means that there's a ring of truth to what he's saying. So you don't just have someone up there spewing, this was an evil woman, this was a terrible woman. You have someone saying, she did this, she threatened to do this, and I was preemptive. I said, hey, cops, come over now and make sure nothing's going on. And that was documented. Yeah, he married her when he was going off to war, but a lot of guys have done that you know, historically, a lot of people have done that. I don't think that's going to be an important fact for the jurors. What they're going to think is important is that the, the, the relationship that he described at the end, there's proof that some of the things that he said occurred actually happened. All right. That was the direct examination. When we come back, Julie Janae, Steve Greenberg will stay with us and we'll talk about the cross-examination of Kit Martin. Don't go anywhere.